What's happening everyone? My name is Alex and welcome back. In today's video we are going to be talking about the Pixel 3 XL and my experience with this phone after using it for about 3 months as my daily driver or my day-to-day -day phone. So I got this phone a couple of weeks before it was released and I'm not using this because I don't have other options. I could use my Note 9, I could use my Huawei Mate 20 Pro, but there is something that brings me back to this phone every single time. Now, don't get me wrong, this phone is far from being perfect, but as I said, there is something about it that always brings me back, but we're going to talk about every single thing. So we're going to start with the physical appearance. As you're well aware, the back of the phone is made out of glass, but me personally, I've been using this phone with the case about 95% of the time. I only take it without the case if I have some tighter pants or if I'm going somewhere fancy and I just don't want um, the bulkiness of the case to get in the way. So if I remove the case, I have absolutely no scratches on the back, but that makes um, sense. Since I have a case on it, there are no scratches on the camera either, because otherwise the camera would touch any surface every time you'd place this um, down. So like this, there are no scratches, and the fingerprint scanner works better than um, it first did, because now it got a bit faster after a couple of um, updates. Now, keep in mind that the fingerprint scanner is not as fast as other phones available on the market, but it's still very, very usable. Now, there is something strange about this phone and that's the fact that the phone doesn't support face unlocking because um, as you are well aware, um, pretty much every phone available on the market, even like $100 phones um, support face unlocking, well, not this one. And th that may have to do with security because um, face unlocking is not as secure as a pin or um, the fingerprint scanner. Moving to the front of the device, well, here I don't use a screen protector and I haven't used a screen protector for pretty much any phone. And without using the screen protector, I don't have absolutely any scratches on the screen. But keep in mind that I try um, to protect the screen as much as I can. So I'm not going to have the keys in the same pocket as the phone. I'm not going to have another phone in the same pocket. So I do my best to keep the screen um, scratch free, basically. And um, after three months, well, the phone basically looks like new. There are no scratches anywhere. But that has to do a lot to the fact that I keep a case on it. And since we are talking about the front of the device, there is something on the front of the device that annoys me every single day. And that is the most obnoxious notch ever made for um, any smartphone. So because of the notch you cannot see your notifications. You can see two notifications and that's about it. The other ones don't show up because the notch is too big. So definitely annoying. And um, if you're watching any videos or any movies and you want to zoom in, well the notch is going to be in your video or movies. So definitely annoying and I've seen a lot of people saying that they get used to the notch. Well there is no getting used to this notch because it's just so big and it's in your way every single day. But there is something in the notch there that we don't get with other phones. So we have two front-facing cameras. We have two 8-megapixel cameras and one of them is an ultra-wide lens. And th that lens is awesome if you're with a group of people or um, if you want to show some of the background on, um, whenever you're taking a selfie. And the cameras on the front of this phone are the best selfie cameras on any phone. Of course, um, the software has a lot to do with that um, as well. But um, if you're looking for a phone to take the best selfies, this is it. Not to mention that the portrait mode looks absolutely stunning. You can even use the night side mode um, of the front facing cameras. And uh, you can take like basically pictures in total darkness and they're going to look good. So yeah, we have to put up with the notch, but to get the best front facing cameras on any smartphone. We also have the second um, front facing speaker in the notch there and uh, I believe that the speakers on the Pixel 3 XL are the best speakers on any Android phone. I think the speakers on the iPhone XS Max sound a bit better but um, if you have to choose the best speakers from an Android phone, well this is the one and this is one of the reasons why I keep coming back to this phone. The speakers are just absolutely amazing. But once again we have to put up with that notch so we can have awesome speakers. But yeah, the speakers are really, really good. Another thing that's really, really good is the rear camera. So on the back we have one camera, just one, a 12.2 megapixel camera. And this is the best camera on any smartphone. Of course, it's not only the camera, the software does most of the work. But this is the main reason why I keep this phone with me every single day. The cameras on it are just absolutely amazing. If you take portrait mode pictures, they turn out really good. If you take regular looking pictures, they turn out really good. If you take any pictures of this phone, they all look really, really good. So there is no other phone that takes pictures as good as this. Of course, it would be nice to have like a wide angle lens on the back, a zoom lens and so on, but we don't get that and um, I guess I have to live with that. But yeah, that is the main reason why uh, this phone stays with me every single day. Now. The cameras are great for pictures, but if you're gonna record videos um, with the, the rear camera, well, then it's not that great and then I'm gonna take the Note 9 with me if I know that I have to, to film something. 
because the video quality from this phone is just not that great. So yeah, the cameras are amazing for pictures, not that amazing for videos and uh, if you film a lot with your phone I do recommend that you buy the Note 9 instead of this. Another thing that got better over the last month or so is the battery life. So when I first started using this phone I was only able to get between 4 to 5 hours of screen on time, but these days I can get up to 7 hours of screen on time. So I never have to charge this twice throughout the day and even if I would have to charge it, um, the phone supports um, fast charging and fast wireless charging with that um, fast wireless charger that you can buy for it. And I haven't actually plugged this in in months, I just put it on that charger um, when I go to bed and then it's charged for the next day. So sure, you can get better battery life from the Note 9 or the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, but as long as the phone makes it through an entire day without having um, to be charged, that's fine with me. Moving on to the software experience, so the phone feels just as fast as it felt in the first day, so no, the phone doesn't slow down and even though we only have 4 gigs of RAM inside this device it doesn't feel slow. Now there are some apps that will have to reload every now and then, but I haven't seen that many having to reload, mostly comparing this to the Note 9 and as I said it feels just as speedy as it was on the first day. The Google Launcher is definitely not my favorite, I got rid of that um, a few days after I started using the phone because um, with the gestures and the app drawer, well everything was kind of confusing, you try to open the multitasking but then you'd open the app drawer and so on. So I installed Nova Launcher instead of the Google Launcher and I have been very very happy with the phone like this. There are still some issues with the Bluetooth connectivity, so you have a pair of headphones connected to the phone, you're listening to music and all of a sudden the Bluetooth connection just fails and then you have to reconnect. And I've seen this happening with my headphones and in the car as well, something that doesn't happen if I'm using my Note 9 for example. It's not as bad as it was at the beginning when I first started using the phone, then it was pretty horrible and that would happen like 5-10 times a day, now it only happens like once or twice a day, but uh, there is still room for improvement. Some apps still don't work as they should, so for example Instagram stories, um, sometimes when you try to post an Instagram story the app just freezes and that doesn't happen on any other phone, it only happens on the Pixel 3 XL. So software optimization or who knows if the apps aren't built for it or who knows, but um, it has gotten better over the past 3 months but there are still some issues and something that you don't expect considering that this is Google's um, flagship device, the phone that pretty much all the manufacturers should look up to. So to quickly conclude this video, I use the Pixel 3 XL for 3 main reasons. The cameras are the best cameras on any smartphone, um, the speakers here, the front facing speakers are the best speakers on any Android phone and I can get customizable cases for it, cases that I couldn't get for other phones and um, well I like having a case that nobody else um, has. The screen is not as good as a lot of other phones available on the market, I mean it looks great but it doesn't get as bright so we can't even compare the screen on this phone or the screen on the Note 9 for example. It would be nice to have more cameras like a wide angle lens, a zoom lens and so on but that doesn't happen with this phone, but at least we have 3 really good cameras. So basically the cameras are the main main reason why you'd buy this phone because they're just absolutely amazing. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did like it don't forget to press that like button, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.